Hello friends, this video on comparing quantities part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The first concept that strikes our mind when we talk about comparing quantities is ratio. So ratio is a comparison of two quantities. So what exactly do we, how do we uh, express ratio? Let's say that these, these are the two girls. Let's call them A and B. Okay, now how do we express ratio? Let's say that we say that height of A is 150 centimeter and height of B is 130 centimeters. So what is the ratio of heights of A and B? So the ratio of the heights would be equal to 150 centimeter divided by 130 which is equal to 15 by 30 which is equal to 15 is to 13. So this is the ratio of the heights of A and B respectively. Now, another way of expressing ratio is that let's say that we say that height of A is twice the height of B. That means if height of B is X, then height of A will be 2 times X or 2X. So in this case, what would be the ratio? So in this particular case, the ratio of height of A by to height of B would be 2X divided by X, which is 2 by 1, which is 2 is to 1. Now, sometimes it might also happen that the units are different. For example, it is told that height of A is 150 centimeters and height of B is 1300 millimeter. So let's say this is how the heights of A and B are given. Then you have to find out the ratio of heights of A and B. So the ratio would be 150 divided by 1300. Is it so? No, that's not the case because one height is in centimeter, the other height is in millimeter. So we can only compare two quantities which are in the same unit because see centimeter and millimeter, they are both two different units. So even though the number, if you only, if you look at the number, so 1300 is bigger than 150. But when you look at the unit as well, then there might be a change, right? So in that case, you might find that 150 centimeter is greater than 1300 millimeter. So units play a very important role when we talk about ratio. So in this case, what we will do, we will convert one of these into the other unit such that both of both the heights are in the same unit. So let's say that we try to convert it in centimeter. So 150 is already in centimeter. So how will we convert 1300 millimeter to centimeter by dividing it by 10? So therefore, this will be 150 by 130, which is equal to 15 is to 13. So very important point to compare two quantities, their units must be the same. Now, ratio is not the only thing which is useful in comparing quantities. Percentage is another useful parameter. The word percentage is derived from a Latin word per centum. What does that mean? Per centum means how much out of 100. So per centum is per 100. So, so you would have seen that whenever we talk about percentage, you say that I scored 70% in maths. That means you scored 70 out of 100 in maths. So that is what percentage means. Let us take an example. Okay, before that percentages are numerators of fractions with denominator 100. So that means the denominator is 100. For example, you talk about 70%, which is 70 out of 100. So the denominator is 100. So, per, so how do we write this? We write only the numerator and then we give percentage symbol because the percentage symbol itself tells you that the denominator is 100. Okay, let's look at this example. So let's say that Mr. and Mrs. Smith they are going out on a long drive of 100 kilometers. So they are going to cover a distance of 100 kilometer. And out of this 100 kilometer, Mrs. Smith drove the car for 75 kilometers. And the remaining distance, which is 25 kilometers, was covered by Mr. Smith. Okay, so now it's really difficult for one person to drive 100 kilometers at a stretch. So they divided the work okay so now if we want to find out that what percentage of the total distance was covered by mrs smith and what percentage of the total distance was covered by mr smith so how will you we find that out 
Okay, let's first look at Mrs. Smith. So Mrs. Smith has covered 75 kilometers out of 100 kilometers. That means if we talk about it in terms of percentage, we can say that Mrs. Smith covered 75% of the total distance. Similarly, if you talk about Mr. Smith, he covered 25 kilometers out of 100 kilometers, which is 25%. So 25% distance was covered by Mr. Smith and 75% distance was covered by Mrs. Smith. So when we make use of percentage, it becomes more generalized. Now you might ask that, okay, in this case, the total distance itself was 100 kilometers. So how does denoting it by percent helps? Well, the usefulness will not be much seen in this case. The usefulness will be more seen when the total distance covered is not actually 100 kilometers. Let's say that the total distance that they are planning to cover is not 100 kilometers, but 20 kilometers. So they are planning to go on a short trip, let's say. So this time the total distance is only 20 kilometers and again we want to find out what percentage was covered by Mr. Smith and what percentage was covered by Mrs. Smith. So in this case out of 20 kilometers Mrs. Smith has covered 12 kilometers and Mr. Smith has covered 8 kilometers. Now let us try to find out the percentage in this case. So in this case Mr. Mrs. Smith covered 12 kilometers out of 20 kilometers. Similarly, Mr. Smith covered 8 kilometers out of 20 kilometers. So we did not get a percentage. Now, how do we get a percentage? Percentage means we need to find out a fraction such that the numerator is any number and the denominator is 100. Right? That is a percentage. So in this case, we need, so here whatever we are seeing, whether it is 12 by 20 or it is 8 by 20, these are fractions. So we need to convert these fractions into fractions with denominator equal to 100. So that is our aim. So how do we do that? So in order to do that, let's see what's the approach that we are going to follow. Now, can you tell me, if there exists any such number which when multiplied to the denominator will give you 100 because your aim is to find out a fraction such that the denominator is 100. So in order to get 100 in the denominator, what, you sh what should you do? You should multiply the denominator by 5 because 20 into 5 is 100. Now if you multiply the denominator by 5, you also need to multiply the numerator by 5 so that the value of the overall fraction remains the same. We remember we learned about equivalent fractions. So if you multiply both numerator and denominator by the same number, then whatever result you get, that is an equivalent fraction, right? So in this case, the numerator would be 12 into 5, that is 60. So 60 out of 100, what does, does that mean? That means 60%. So basically, Mrs. Smith covered 60% of the total distance. Similarly, we can do the same for Mr. Smith. So here also, let's divide the numerator and denominator by, uh, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 5. So we get 40 by 100, which is 40%. So with this simple concept of percentage, we can very easily tell that, okay, Miss, Mrs. Smith covered 60% of the distance and Mr. Smith covered 40% of the distance. Now, it doesn't matter whether the total distance was 20 kilometers or 40 kilometers or 100 kilometers, but the comparison can happen by saying that 60% for Mrs. Smith and 40% for Mr. Smith. Now, as the total distance varies, this exact value of 60% or 40% will also change. For example, when it is 20 kilometer, then 60% of 20 kilometer is 12 kilometer. When it is 100 kilometer, then 60% of 100 kilometers is 60 kilometers. So in that fashion, as the total distance will change, the exact distance covered by each of them will also change. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.